Hey everyone, what's up? This is Kathy with Fierce and Fearless Nursing, and today we're going to be talking about the parathyroid hormone. So let's talk about hyperparathyroidism first. A nurse is caring for a patient with hyperparathyroidism. What instructions should the nurse give the patient? Should we restrict sodium, increase potassium rich foods, increase fluid intake, or restrict fluid intake? Well, first, let's go ahead and review the parathyroid hormone itself. We know that the parathyroid hormone comes from the parathyroid gland, which is located on the thyroid. And the parathyroid is responsible for releasing parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone is released when we have low blood calcium. So the parathyroid hormone will go to the bones and it will take the calcium out of the bone and put it into the blood. So that increases our blood calcium. So let's talk about what happens when we have an increase in blood calcium. With hyperparathyroidism, we're often gonna see signs and symptoms of uh, increased calcium in the blood. And so a lot of times what we can remember is moans, groans, stones, and bones. So those are gonna be our main signs and symptoms and things to remember when we're talking about increased calcium in the blood. So we can see some bone pain because we've got too much calcium going out of the bone and into the blood. So that's gonna cause bone pain, osteoporosis. Another thing that we can see with increased calcium is an increased calcium in the kidneys, and that's going to end up forming stones. So if we go back up to our question, we can look at restricting sodium. Well, we know sodium doesn't have anything to do with hyperparathyroidism, and neither does potassium, so we can get rid of those two. The next part, C and D, those are opposites. Most of the time, we're going to see questions if they have the opposites then they're both going to, one of those is going to be correct, and that's true here. So if I have a patient who has kidney stones, I am going to want to make sure that I increase my fluid intake. So that's going to be my right answer. I want to increase my fluid intake to go ahead and help um, flush those that calcium out of the blood. So that's going to be my answer here. So let's talk a little bit more about hyperparathyroidism. Causes are usually going to be due to either tumors or low vitamin D. Those are the two things that we're going to see with uh, hyperparathyroidism and why we would end up seeing increased parathyroid hormone, especially with the vitamin D. Because if the vitamin D, if we don't have enough vitamin D, that's not going to be able to absorb calcium. And so we're not gonna have enough blood calcium. And so the parathyroid hormone is gonna to have to go in and get calcium out of the bone. So those would be the causes of hyperparathyroidism. So now let's talk a little bit about hypoparathyroidism. With hypoparathyroidism, obviously we have a low parathyroid hormone. And if we have a low parathyroid hormone, that of course is going to lead to a low calcium level, a low blood calcium level. So basically the main cause of uh, decreased parathyroid hormone is going to be a thyroidectomy. So the main cause, I'm going to put this here, cause is going to be taking out that thyroid. Because if we take out the thyroid, obviously the parathyroid hormone is going to go along with it. So having low parathyroid hormone um, is going to be due to a thyroidectomy most of the time. So I want to remind you about calcium levels. Calcium levels are 9 to 11. And I always remember this by thinking call 911. Calcium call and then nine to 11. And so just remember that and you'll never forget the levels for calcium. 
So thank you for uh, your time today. I hope that you learned something. And if you would like to get in touch with me for any type of one-on-one -on -one coaching or tutoring, you can get in touch with me at fearsomefearlessnursing at gmail.com or through a direct message on Instagram. Be fierce and fearless and have a great Monday.